All right, guys, welcome back to the workbench. And what I want to show you, if you've been watching my Instagram and probably the Facebook page, you've probably already seen. But I kind of wanted to address some of the questions that people have been asking me. Before I show you what it is, though, in the video, let me explain how I got to the point. Um, so right in front of you in the video, you'll see two different little kind of micro nano-ish quads. Now, I've been trying different things experimenting. This is a class that I don't have a lot of experience in. Um, I've flown a lot of 5 inch, a lot of 4 inch, and a lot of 3 inch quads, but anything smaller than that, there's a different uh, learning curve to it. And it's not the flying part, it's the building part. It's the specking the components, the sizes, just kind of learning what the gear can do. So, we'll start off with this little guy. And uh, depending on how long you've been following, you've probably seen pictures of this. This is a brushed nano quad that I had tried to do and uh, you know I was inspired by some other people that were doing these things um, Rotorious FPV has some pretty nice ones in fact I have one of theirs I have the spark which to be honest <laughs> their stuff is so good that's part of the reason why I gave up on this is because I figured you know I'll just go buy a Rotorious FPV version of a brush quad if I want to fly brushed um, he pretty much knows his stuff so anyways, I tried this, um, and it was going to be called SCX90. As you can see, it's X-shaped, has an all-in-one camera, and 8mm, 8.5mm brush motors, along with a hover ship uh, flight control board that has the speed controls built in. What I learned about this is that brushed motors in particular are not that powerful, and you have to be very careful with weight. So I actually built a couple of these and had to whittle the weight down to get it to work. And it just never performed like I wanted it to. And then, more recently, probably in the past couple months, I don't remember exactly when, I decided, let's just do something really simple, but let's go brushless. So I came up with a single plate, and I called it the MSX for Micro Simple X. And the idea behind this was that I would just bolt on some Rotorex 1105B motors, an all-in-one 10 amp speed control, and something like a Furious FPV, uh, what do you call this thing, the Pico BLX, and run that. So I ended up building that, and I've been flying that, and uh, I've been having a lot of fun with it. Um, I haven't posted a lot of videos because I haven't really been DVRing most of my flights lately. but. You can see it's pretty straightforward, it's super simple, and that's why it's called the Micro Simple X. It's literally just one carbon plate, and then everything else is stacked there with a 3D printed part to hold the camera at an angle. Um, but obviously, this is really not my style. This is still more of a learning platform for me. This was just to kind of check out the technology and uh, get, you know, get my feet wet when it comes to these micro brushless setups. So, I wanted to do something that was genuinely Space Cowboy. And what I mean by that is, you know, a simple X-plate, not really gonna cut it for me, that's not my style. You know, I kinda wanna do things that are unique, things that other people haven't done. And my philosophy is a little different. Um, and if you're familiar with some of my quads, like for example, sorry, I got these cables on here that I need to solder in. It's XLR3 that I'm building right now. I kind of have my own unique style, and I spend a lot of time on this trying to come up with something that's not only functional, but has a nice form that's pleasing to me. So, XLR is one of my current lines of quad frames. I have three. Um, I've got the 4SL, which is the Super Light 4, which a lot of people think the frame's meant to be super light. It's light, but it's not supposed to be super, super light. The lightness comes from having lighter motors. Um, whereas traditionally we were running 2204s and bigger motors that were heavier, this will come out a lot lighter because it's using 1407s or 1408s. And then of course I also had the original XLR4, which used 1806s. But you can see, if you look at each one of these, you kind of have this kind of vertical plate that holds the camera in and the antenna in the back and it's got like a certain style to it and you can see that in these two frames that they, they both kind of follow that same kind of shape in general 
So uh, it is a stretched X. So if you weren't aware of that, that's exactly what XLR means. It actually means extended length racer. Um, SCX meant Space Cowboy Experimental, but it was also supposed to stand for X quad because it was a symmetrical X. So getting back to that, XLR is a stretch X, um, extended length racer. And the, the name genesis, um, it goes XLR4, XLR3, and now XLR2. And of course, the number correlates to the prop size. So anyways, this is XLR2. Let's go over some of the features real quick. Um, I've got a couple of them here. Uh, let's start out by explaining that this thing, the particular version you see right here, this is the Emacs Power Pack version. Now, uh, what I decided to do was to start off with, and this was another inspiration, I'll say, from Flight Test, and even from Atmospheric Adventures was doing this. So Emacs came out with this nice, cool Power Pack kit. And they have a couple of them, but they came out with a Micro Power Pack kit, and it basically includes your motors, your ESCs, and your flight control, as well as props. And uh, this is the same gear that they run in the new Baby Hawk, which just got released. So you get these props with it. And uh, it's all paired up. So basically all you got to do is get a receiver, get a camera and a VTX and throw it on there and you're good to go. So it covers a lot of your bases for you. And everything's sized to work. Now it's only 1 to 2S capable. I have been reading that some people have been trying 3S. So we'll see how long that works out for. But this is intended to be kind of a quick get started. You don't have to go source all your components because sometimes, you know, having the right motors and ESCs saves a lot of time. So this is the Emacs Power Pack Edition version. But I couldn't stop there. I'm going to have more than one version. Um, it'll look almost identical, but the base plate will be different, and so will the flight controller mounting plate. So right now, uh, the flight controller is just basically mounted with some double-sided sticky tape that's included with the Emacs Power Pack kit and that's how it sits on the flight controller plate. But uh, this should also accommodate a 20x20 20 20 mounting pattern flight controller, so um, pretty soon I should have the new base plates for that. They'll also be able to mount on Rotor X style motors, so like the 1104s, 1105s, you'll be able to mount those, and two inch props. Right now the Emacs one is a little bit bigger um, than the two, the real true two inch one will be because Emacs decided that they were going to have 2.3 millimeter props or inch props I should say. So they do fit without hitting anything on the Emacs version. If you decide that you want the other version, which I'm going to release, it won't fit the Emacs gear, it won't fit the Emacs props, it'll have a slightly smaller stance. But it's not much. So and it's gonna be exactly the same in the center. So anyways, that is the XLR2 in a nutshell. Um, real quick, I'll just kinda of take this one apart so you can see kinda of how it's set up inside. Uh, and uh, it's kind of simple, but at the same time, um, you know, there's some stuff I still need to iron out. So basically you have your 2 millimeter base plate and on top of that you have a flight controller mount is what I'm calling it. And basically the flight controller mount, this is the Emacs one of course, is just a piece of 1 millimeter carbon that you can mount your flight controller to. And the reason I did that was because, especially with the Emacs controller, it has no mounting provisions on it. You pretty much have to double sided tape it. But I also want to be able to put the strap through the bottom plate. So basically you have your strap for your bottom plate. You can go through the strap, mount your flight controller to the one millimeter flight controller plate, stick it onto these screws, which are held in with some nylon nuts. This is all nylon hardware, by the way. So you put it on like that, put on your standoffs, wire all your stuff in. And then of course you got your XLR style pod, which goes on top. And uh, kind of want to show you that too. So give me one second, get the standoff on here and kind of show you how this all slots together and explain a little bit about it. Hopefully I can find my extra camera. If not, I'll just explain with words. So anyways, this is the XLR2 pod and it's all one millimeter carbon. And this is all to keep it lightweight. So something I learned from doing the micro quads earlier 
um, like I said, was weight is an issue. So part of the goal was to keep this whole thing light. So everything's either one millimeter carbon or two. And the only thing that is two millimeter carbon is actually the base plate. Everything else is one millimeter. So what you have here is a camera plate. Uh, this can mount approximately a 16 by 16 millimeter camera of any type. So um, what I'm using is the detached FXT combo, which has the camera and the VTX is up here. But uh, something like this, which is a VM275 or a CM275, it depends on where you're buying it, I believe, would also fit as well. And this has the VTX built into a second plate. That will fit on there. Uh, so I've done a unique, what I think is a fairly unique mounting method. Um, let me, oh crap, I'm spilling these everywhere. Anyways, I don't know how many of you guys go to the craft stores. Um, basically what I've got here is a big old bag. Let me close it up so I don't leak any more of them out. Big old bag of rubber band like things. And these are actually called rainbow loom bands. Um, if you've been to a Joanne Fabrics or you know, a Michael's Craft Store or Hobby Lobby or whatever, they have this toy for kids called Rainbow Loom. And it's basically a pegboard that you weave little rubber band type things together. So I've been looking for the right size rubber band for something I wanted to do. And it turns out that these are probably the best and they're cheap. I think I paid four or five bucks and there's 600 of these in here, which obviously I don't need 600, but um, I have them. So these bands are pretty pretty strong you can stretch them quite a bit you can see that's pretty far I mean that's a, a one inch maybe band I'm gonna stretch it well let's see one inch uh, one square is one inch right that's about a one inch band right boom <laughs> four to one stretch ratio that's a pretty strong rubber band so how this works is I've got the camera mount and it's carbon so what you want to do is you want to put a piece of double-sided tape or a uh, piece of foam or something on the back side and then you stick your camera on there you notice it's got this little kind of loop thing to lock the band on and you can wrap this around your camera to hold it on so you can pretty much just keep rubber banding it on there as many times as you want and that'll snug it up and hopefully it'll act like a vibration damper as you can see I can move this around and it's not really going to go anywhere, but it's nice and solid in there for the most part. So that's my camera mount. That's how it works. It's pretty simple. Uh, you can take this rubber band off. And the way it assembles is it slots into the side plates, which as you can see are very XLR inspired, especially in the front. The back's a little different. Um, I did come up with another new way to attach these. If you remember XLR4, you'll know that I had lots of hardware to put these things together and kind of as we've downsized as part of the goal to keep making each version lighter I've also reduced the amount of hardware needed to put it together so right here I've got both of these side plates holding on to the camera plate which fits in the slots and then I have the top plate and basically these fall through here and then this thing slides forward and locks it all in so you got your pod assembly now this is the first version so I'm still playing with the tolerance stack up a little bit um, you know I haven't used one millimeter carbon a lot and it turns out that one millimeter carbon the manufacturing variance is between different thicknesses um, that it's not you know the same tolerance that you get out of two and 1.5 millimeter or even four millimeter carbon so the thickness and all this stack up needs to be adjusted i'm going to work on that but once you've got this all assembled it basically just sits down in here and the two little vertical plates lock into it's probably going to be hard to see but there's two little kind of tab slots on the front and the back that those lock into that keep them held in and then of course whatever I do with the screws you just put these three nylon screws in and that kind of holds it all together and uh, it's pretty straightforward um, and again this this is actually pretty lightweight um, when I was designing this 
You know, after the first time of designing the brushed quad and learning that the weight made a huge difference for the brushed motors, I went through my CAD program and I started inputting material properties. So from Armitan, I was able to get the density of the carbon and actually they, they publish it. It's pretty well known. You go on the Armitan Productions website, it says straight out, you know, their carbon weighs this many kilograms per a meter cubed. And you can put that into your properties in your CAD program. And then when you're designing, you can periodically go through and check and see how much each component weighs. Um, you can actually see how much the whole assembly weighs. And it's good for when you're designing because you can see exactly how much your changes affect the weight of the overall product. So uh, using my CAD tool, I put in nylon for all my standoffs and my hardware. I put in the carbon density for the carbon pieces and I came out to 15.9 grams, I think, is what I estimated. And, sorry, I gotta turn this on. So I said 15.9. Oh, this one came out to be 15.6. Let's throw a rubber band on there. Let's throw a couple rubber bands. Yeah, 15.6. Well, I guess that one came out lighter than the uh, CAD. Let's just double check that. Let's tear real quick. 15.7, 15.6, 15.7. I was under the impression it was gonna be right around 15.8, 15.9, according to the CAD, if I remember correctly. So that's pretty good. Uh, that shows that my tool is estimating pretty accurately. And that was my goal, was to get around 15. Um, so I think that's a pretty respectable weight for a two inch frame. Now I believe the, uh, the actual two inch version, not the Emacs version, might be a tad bit lighter just because the arms are a little bit shorter but we're probably talking a fraction of a gram. So anyways, that is XLR2. Um, like I said, it's meant for an all-in-one camera VTX or this detached combo. Um, this version is Emacs version, which I will be probably releasing first. I just need to make some tweaks to some of the, the uh, carbon to make it fit together a little tighter. And then uh, I will post them to my store when I get them available and also Armitan Productions for international customers. So anyways, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. I also do Instagram and I have a Facebook page, which I'll put those descriptions in the, or those links in the description. So thanks for tuning in. Bye.